Hey everyone, Tesla Tom here. Thanks so much for joining us today on Ludicrous Feed. Today I just want to go through the Tesla Energy Plan and Virtual Power Plant. Recently I received this email from Tesla asking me to join the Tesla Energy Plan, which is now available in my community. Powered by the Tesla Energy Plan, our Virtual Power Plant is purpose-built for Powerwall, providing carbon-neutral energy while maximizing your savings and helping your community. You will receive $220 in grid support credits per year per Powerwall, in addition to a $100 welcome credit when you sign up. If you go to the Tesla website, there it is right there, the Tesla Energy Plan, join Australia's largest virtual power plant. So what is a virtual power plant? Let's go through it right now. Welcome to Australia's largest virtual power plant, purpose-built for Powerwall owners. Tesla's virtual power plant is a network of homes like yours that supports the grid with clean, renewable energy. Our world-leading technology optimizes the use of your power wall based on your energy needs, market conditions, weather and anticipated grid events to ensure it benefits your home, while also supporting the community with clean, renewable energy. In return, you receive competitive energy rates, grid support credits and power wall credits to reward your participation. You can join our virtual power plant today by signing up to the Tesla Energy Plan. So the concept of a virtual power plant is basically to optimize your battery to make sure you get the most out of it, both financially, as well as using it in a smarter way to take advantage of low electricity rates, and also as part of the bigger picture to help the community by supporting the grid when it's needed. So let's drill down a little bit more into the detail, maximize savings, take advantage of flexible time of use rates to help reduce your energy bill, become more aware of when and how you're using your energy to help avoid peak periods. And that's the key, to help avoid peak periods if you're on a time of use plan by using your battery in a smarter way. We'll certainly go through that in a real world scenario using my own power bill. 50 discharge cycles and a discharge cycle is when the battery is discharged from a full state to an empty state. That counts as one discharge. Powerwall will be limited to a maximum 50 discharge cycles per year an event can range from a very small amount, less than one kilowatt hour, up to the full capacity, excluding backup reserve. And this excludes the Osgrid distribution network, which is where my house in Sydney is based. And the Sydney example is very different, which I'll go through as well with my real world power bill example later on. I also want to draw your attention to this event. So an event occurs when the software from the virtual power plant takes energy from your battery. And this normally occurs when the wholesale electricity price is high and therefore when they take electricity from your battery this particular power company managing this virtual power plant will benefit because using your electricity from your power wall they profit from a higher wholesale electricity price conversely when the price is low that's when they will charge your power wall because it's cheaper to do so now you must know that with other virtual power plants you actually do get compensated when a grid event occurs when they discharge your battery for example, I'm with Evergen currently and they do pay you $1 per kilowatt hour that they discharge from your battery when this grid event occurs. Unfortunately, with Tesla's in-house virtual power plant, this does not occur. So keep that in mind, you do not get compensated when a grid event occurs from your battery. And also take note that the backup reserve is set at 20% minimum. Now this extended warranty is quite interesting. Receive five years additional warranty on your Powerwall when you join by the 30th of September 2022 and remain connected to the Tesla energy plan. So this is quite interesting. The basic Tesla Powerwall 2 warranty is 10 years and they warrant it to 70% of your original battery capacity. So if your battery capacity is less than 70% of that 13.5 kilowatt hours, which is about 9.45 kilowatt hours, then you may be entitled to a warranty claim. This additional five years warrants it to 60% of your original battery capacity, which is 8.1 kilowatt hours after 15 years. So that is quite a good benefit to have if you do decide to jump onto this virtual power plant. Grid support credits, receive grid support credits for each power wall that you own, in addition to the other benefits included in your Tesla energy plan. So that's $220 in grid credits per year for each power wall that you own. To join Tesla's virtual power plant through the Tesla energy plan, you must meet the below criteria, have an existing or purchase a new Powerwall. This excludes Powerwall 1. Residential customers in an eligible Tesla energy plan region, of which I am part of, on Sydney's Ausgrid distribution network, internet connection, Wi-Fi or Ethernet, smart meter installed or agreed to have one installed at your home at no cost, 
operating solar system under 15 kilowatts per power wall. That's important. 15 kilowatts per power wall and no zero export restrictions in place. So that's also important as well because I do know that some regions do have an export restriction in place. So having read through the Tesla virtual power plant FAQ, you should also know that there is a $1,000 rebate for new Powerwall customers who join this virtual power plant within 30 days of installation. There is also no lock-in contract as well. So who is actually running the Tesla virtual power plant? It's these guys, Energy Locals. Energy Locals is proudly 100% Australian owned and operated. We provide individuals, small businesses and larger commercial enterprises with clean, reliable and cost effective energy. So this is my time of use tariff for the Ausgrid distribution network, which is where my house is in Sydney. So I'll run through it now for you. So a feed-in tariff of 30 cents per kilowatt hour. And that seems quite good, 30 cents. That's the highest feed-in tariff that I can see for my area. The only catch is that it only applies between 2 and 8 p.m. I guess this is a bit problematic for me, and I'll go through why in a second. If there is solar production in any other time outside 2 to 8 p.m., and of course that probably only applies before 2 p.m. because that's when the sun is out, you do not get any feed-in tariff at all. So that's zero for outside of this 2 to 8 p.m. Admittedly, it's 30 cents within this time period here. And note too also that if you do experience a grid event, like I said, when they decide to take energy from your battery because wholesale electricity prices are high, you do not get any compensation financially for that grid event. Peak is 33 cents. Solar soak is between 10 and 2 p.m. It will cost you 22 cents. Off peak is 22 cents between 8 p.m. and 10 a.m., which is basically overnight. And then controlled load is 16.72 cents for hot water. Daily supply charge of 99 cents per day. And you get this $220 credit per annum. Now, I just want to focus a bit more on this feed-in tariff of 30 cents per kilowatt hour between 2 and 8 p.m. Let me just show you now a couple of real-world examples from my experience, having been a Tesla Powerwall 2 owner for the last six years. This picture here on the left was taken on the 16th of May, so just six days ago, and we are currently in autumn. You'll see here that these red dotted lines here are the hours between 2 and 8 p.m. So this is where they would pay you 30 cents per kilowatt hour. As you can see, between 2 and 8 p.m., there really is not much solar production at all once you passed that peak of about 12 p.m. in autumn. And that is a concern because although it is 30 cents per kilowatt hour, there's not much sun at all towards the tail end uh, of the day. Most of the solar production actually occurs before 2 p.m. However, you'll see that the area under the curve in green, that represents when the Tesla Powerwall 2 is charging. You can see that the battery is already mostly charged by 10 a.m. with my solar system size of 8.4 kilowatts. And let's have a look at this example on the right here where I've taken a screenshot from the 31st of December in the peak of summer. And even in summer, you'll see that by 2 p.m., my Tesla Powerwall 2 battery is already charged to 100%, denoted by this sharp line here. And that occurs at about 10 a.m. in the morning. And therefore, you've got this large area here under the curve where basically if you're on this Tesla virtual power plant, there is no feed-in tariff. You're not getting a single cent for this excess solar production. Sure, by 2 p.m. you will benefit with a 30 cents per kilowatt hour feed-in tariff. However, as you can see from this example, on this hot day in summer, the air conditioning was starting to run by about 3 or 4 p.m. And therefore, there is no feed-in tariff anyway past this time if you happen to be running a cooling system using up all your solar production. I am understandably skeptical of this high feed-in tariff, but only restricted to 2 to 8 p.m. every day. All right, so now I'm going to run through a real-world example using my own power bill. But before I do that, I just want to quickly run through my scenario again so you get an idea of what my situation is. So about me, I have a family of four here in Sydney, Australia. We've got two electric vehicles running two lots of three-phase chargers, a Tesla Gen 3 charger and a Tesla Gen 2 charger, charging a Tesla Model 3 and a Tesla Model S. I've got 8.4 kilowatts of solar panels on my roof. And of course, a Tesla Powerwall 2 with a 13.5 kilowatt hour capacity, which was recently tested by myself to show almost no degradation in six years of ownership. I'm with PowerShop currently, and also with the Evergen Virtual Power Plant. And we do run Charge HQ, which is in beta at the moment. And Charge HQ is basically a software controlled app that takes advantage of excess solar production to charge electric vehicles when they're plugged in. So this slide here represents my own real-world electricity bill from the period of 14th of March 2022 to the 12th of April 2022, 
30-day period inclusive of GST, goods and services tax here in Australia. And I've run a simulation comparing a power shop bill, which is what I'm currently on, compared to if I was on the Tesla virtual power plant with their tariffs. So let's go through it right now. So power shop has two off-peak periods. Off-peak two, which is basically 6.6 .6 cents per kilowatt hour between 12 midnight and 4 a.m. between Monday and Friday. And that's basically to help you charge your electric vehicles at a cheaper rate. Off-peak 1 is between the hours of 10 p.m. to 12 midnight and 4 a.m. to 7 a.m. on a weekday and 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. on a weekend night. And that's priced at 13.2 cents per kilowatt hour. As you can see in comparison, the Tesla virtual power plant is 22 cents per kilowatt hour corresponding to PowerShop's two off-peak periods. The peak period is between 2 p.m. and 8 p.m. and that is 36.52 cents per kilowatt hour for PowerShop where it's 33 cents for the Tesla virtual power plant, so slightly cheaper. The shoulder period is 17.6 cents per kilowatt hour for every other time outside these off-peak and peak periods, whereas Tesla virtual power plant is 22 cents per kilowatt hour. The daily supply charge is more expensive than PowerShop, with PowerShop at $1.10 per day, so therefore it's $33 for a 30-day period, whereas Tesla virtual power plant is 99 cents, so a bit cheaper at $29. And in this 30-day period, we produced 358 kilowatt hours of excess solar, which was fed back to the grid, admittedly at a much lower rate of 5 cents per kilowatt hour. So I got a $17.90 credit for that from PowerShop. Now, at this point, I'm going to give the Tesla virtual power plant the benefit of the doubt and say that even though the feed-in tariff is only between 2 and 8 p.m., I'm actually going to give all this excess solar that PowerShop gave me 5 cents for and run the simulation anyway at 30 cents per kilowatt hour for the entire 358 kilowatt hours, even though in reality it's probably only going to be less because as I showed you in this slide here, that most of the solar excess actually will not be credited because it's outside of this 2 to 8 p.m. period, even in the peak of summer, and certainly not so in autumn when a lot of it will not be credited because there's not much solar production after 2 p.m. in autumn and I would assume be even less in winter when there's far less sun. So giving the virtual power plant the benefit of the doubt, I would have gotten back $107.40, which of course looks great on paper. Now, of course, with PowerShop, you do get discounts. You can buy your power packs in advance. For example, you can buy the September and October ones for $25 and $30 uh, respectively, and you'll save $5 and $7 respectively if you pay your power in advance. And of course, there is a referral program as well. If you use my referral code, which I will place in the video description below, you get $75 worth of credit and I get $75 worth of credit as well. But back to the bill, because of those discounts, my bill was made $15 cheaper. And as I said, I'm currently with the Evergen virtual power plant and I do get a retainer of $10 per month. And if I do experience a grid event, where Evergen will start to discharge my battery to feed back to the grid, I do get paid $1 per kilowatt hour. With the Tesla virtual power plant scheme, you do not get any compensation financially if they do discharge energy from your battery. But something you do get with the Tesla virtual power plant in compensation is the $220 worth of credit per annum. So therefore you do get a credit of $18.33 per month with that extra credit. So how does this all compare side by side having taken all this into consideration. So with PowerShop, my bill for this period in March to April, I paid $69.22, having charged both electric vehicles, running a home in Sydney with a Tesla Powerwall 2 battery and on the Evergen virtual power plant, and also with PowerShop discounts. In comparison, had I been on the Tesla virtual power plant with exactly the same scenario in the same time of year, my simulation said I would have paid $104 and 17 cents, that's more than $30 than with PowerShop currently. So for now, at the current rates that energy locals are advertising with the Tesla virtual power plant in the Osgrid distribution network for my Sydney home, I would have to say I will stick with PowerShop for now because I'm financially better off rather than switching with Tesla virtual power plant. My only caveat is that of course with Tesla virtual power plant, you do get that extra five years of warranty if you do sign up before the 30th of September, 2022. And that's something you may want to take into consideration you're deciding on a new electricity provider for your Tesla Powerwall 2. All right, everyone, that's my video on the Tesla energy plan and the current rates here for my home in Sydney, Australia. Of course, your situation may be different wherever you are in Australia because this example is very specific for the Oscar 
distribution network. So I do suggest that you take a previous power bill and run a simulation against the Tesla energy plan for the tariffs in your local area. Alright everyone, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel if you've not done so already yet. Otherwise, stay safe and as always, happy charging.